We are going to have to act if we want to live in a different world. Hey Dwellers, to stay up to date on all the latest news, reviews, openings and of course weekly programming, just click on the little guy here in the corner to subscribe and you'll get notifications when the newest content lands. Uh, please enjoy the video. Hello Dwellers and welcome to this week's episode of Looking Back. Uh, this week we're looking at what's possibly the most influential real time strategy game that actually came out back in the 90s as Although it came out around the same time, we'll see the legendary Age of Empires series. It was a good old fashioned RTS game uh, created by Westwood Studios before they were brought by EA. And basically, most of the games in this genre were based around this game, even up to the modern day now. Of course, I'm talking about Command and Conquer. Now, today I'm covering the original PC game. Obviously, it was ported later on. And that's from the first series which was Tiberium Wars and I'm also covering the first edition that they gave to the Red Alert series too. Now the original Command and Conquer was set in an alternate timeline on Earth when it had been covered in a mysterious crystal named Tiberium. War broke out between two groups, the Global Defence Initiative known as GDI which was a UN created group and a revolutionary group called the Brotherhood of Nod which is led by a man named Cain, who was supposed to have prophesied the crystal, and basically the Brotherhood of Nods was seeking to harness the power of the crystal, whereas GDI was fighting to destroy it. The game is led off basically the idea of building a base and an army to wipe out the enemy who's doing the same. Uh, Westwood Studios actually started this game as an alternate to creating another Doom game, as after they made June, they basically said they didn't want to be playing around with sand anymore, which was an actual quote from their team they sent out. Uh, the game works in a structure of, as you progress further through the game, technology was unlocked, which allows you to build bigger and better bases and expand your forces further. And it was a great use of the click and drag boxes that allowed you to select exactly what you wanted to use. Um, one of the main principles was it was, you could create your own strategies different every time uh, if you wanted to to do exactly what you wanted and obviously combining that as well with the fact that the game had a smog system which basically meant the only parts of the map that you could see and what was happening on them were ones that had actually been previously covered by your troops by physically going there now again that allowed both sides to build strategies and basically Although it was a basic game for its time, it really was a big step forwards. I mean, not only was the gameplay so advanced in the fact that it wasn't linear in any way, the graphics, uh, though they were a lower resolution for the time uh, than some of the newer games that have come out, it actually allowed them to use the memory they saved to create a completely open game and map that allowed you to control your every move and just truly be in command of your army. Uh, it was well supported with a great storyline. It allowed you to play as either side so you could see the story from their perspective and one of the really cool things they added in which a few games were at the time was the fact that they were using digitally rendered in cutscenes so they were actually recording with real actors to add a nice depth of narration and realism to the storyline uh, as a game playing at the time when it came out it was just an amazing thing to see I mean having a proper storyline played out and acted for you like a TV program and being able to just pick what you want to do, move around as a lot of games then were very linear because of the lack of programming abilities that they had. And then moving on two years later, a new universe was created for the Command and Conquer series, which was known as Command and Conquer Red Alert. Now, everything in the game was improved upon with this. Uh, it's, it, they did the story, the Allied Nations of the West versus the Soviet Union, but they went straight from the get-go. Graphics were much more clear. There was loads more buildings, more types of troops to be available. And they really added a much more in-depth storyline this time round. Again, you could play the story from either side to, uh, to get their perspective of the story. 
and obviously shape how history went depending on which side you played as but apart from being a cool game it made it very addictive and the missions now had objectives as well so there were certain things you had to do instead of just having to wipe out the enemy and much much bigger maps that allowed you to have many more options and approaches to missions and it, you really had to start planning out your route and what units you needed for the job because some units were strong against others and vice versa so obviously you had to plan ahead for that one uh and the good example as well is like with the new buildings you had different types of power plants etc that have been added in but one thing they definitely added into this game that people noticed was the new types of defenses that your bases had and the one that became quite famous was the tesla coil which was a coil that would electrocute enemy troops as they approached the base that you could build if you were playing as the soviets and well, as everyone discovered the first time you couldn't just charge in anymore if you were playing as the gdi now both games they were very simple but fantastic games red alert was a vast improvement in the original as i said but both games for their time had a great replay value sometimes as i said in other videos some uh, simplicity pardon me is just a fantastic way of making something more addictive because some games especially now they try and throw so much in there that they just don't get the desired effect they should have now obviously for going back and playing it it's probably a bit too slow for a lot of people to play now but if you're into a nice bit of nostalgia like myself it's definitely worth a trip down memory lane and if you've got a pc laptop you can actually buy all the original games for only a tenner so it's definitely worth checking out if you get the chance anyway thank you guys and uh for watching let me know what you think of your command and con experiences if you've played them before i mean with any of the games just drop some in the comment box i always like to hear what people think and stay tuned in for future episodes of top 10 and looking back with me shadow soul dweller i'll see you out there guys